good news, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Live on SABC3, I'm Bonnie Booty. Today's the 25th, which marks the start of 16 days of activism. In light of this, today we're joined by renowned international ambassador of peace and author, all the way from India, Prem Rawat, who just earlier today met with Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We are very privileged to have him in the loft today and to learn more about his message of peace. A little later on, we'll also be looking at the importance of deworming your pets. And we have the online editor of Your Pregnancy magazine, to share some tips on making healthy choices during your pregnancy. I'm not flying solo today. My co-pilot is in the kitchen, Danilo. Indeed. Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. So, marking 16 days of activism all begins today against women and children abuse. I think a lot of the time, people tend to jump on these bandwagons and tell these stories of hope and support. But it's very often sometimes feels like something that's not personal, something that people haven't gone through. Like, you don't know what I feel. Well, today, joining us in the loft, we do have somebody who definitely knows how that feels. Tammy B., I'm very proud of you, for first of all, for being here and coming to share your story with us today. Are you feeling like you are ready to, to do this? Yes, Danilo. Well, I mean, you and I, we've gone way back. We even had our little Mr. and Mrs. Smith days. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm feeling very happy. And especially okay. with Bonnie, I love her to death. So it's going to awesome. be a good day. So let's just let it all out. Fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more of that story. And you can hopefully encourage the rest of South Africans. So make sure you guys stay tuned and keep in touch with us on all of our social media platforms. Hopefully today will inspire you. Joining us in the kitchen today is our favorite chef and food stylist, Claire Winstanley. And today we're making 3.141567, whatever. We're making pie. Does that... I don't even know if I got all my... If that's correct, right? Ah, oh, yes, we are <laughs> making the perfect picnic pie. So it's beautiful caramelized onion with a smoky mm. cheese pie. So it's deliciously and de delicious and vegetarian at the same time. Yes, indeed. Awesome. All well, that recipe and the shopping list is available for you on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. And all the other recipes that we have are available for you on that website. But seeing as today is such an uh, important topic for us as South Africans, we want you to engage with us. Our number to dial is 0839133728. Otherwise, find us on Facebook, Afternoon Express. On Twitter, it's Afternoon Chat. And you can use that hashtag, Afternoon Express. Let's kick off today's show with Bonnie on the couch. Thanks, Danilo. He's a renowned international ambassador of peace who's been delivering a simple yet profound message for more than five decades. Yearly, he travels an average of 185,000 kilometers, reaching hundreds of thousands of people all across the globe, with his core message being that peace will be humanity's greatest achievement. Presently in South Africa, having recently completed a packed tour of India and the Pacific region, it is an honor to have in our loft Prem Rawat. Welcome to the loft, Prem. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, it's lovely to have you. How's, been, how's South Africa been for you this time? Oh, it's wonderful, after the change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, I came here when I was a teenager. In 1972, That's and you exactly were 14 right. years old. Yes. It was quite an interesting experience. And tell us why. Well, um, I had traveled, mm -hmm. obviously, and uh, I didn't prepare myself for what was to come once I arrived at the airport hmm. because apartheid was in full swing. Right. And everything was segregated. And so, you know, it was just very strange to just see this separation everywhere because here my message always has been we are human beings on the face of this earth. We're made out of the same exact stuff. Mm -hmm. And why bring in the differences? I mean, what is the point? But that's what was going on. Right. And so when I actually got in and um, they told me, oh, by the way, there's one minor detail about the events that you're going to be doing in South Africa. And I said, what? He said, well, you can't have mixed meetings. So, you know, you have to yeah. do one Your meeting. Meetings, you have for, to address yes, segregated groups of people. Exactly. Right. And I said, there is no way I'm going to do that. I'm going to have mixed meetings, period. So I proceeded to do that. Of course, because I was a teenager, I don't think they wanted to throw me in jail. And it would have been a major international incident. Yeah. But they blacklisted me. Wow. And then I couldn't come to South Africa for a long period of time. For a very time. long time, yeah, until yes. the change took place. Yes. I mean, you were 14 years old and you'd planned to address millions of people. But you started speaking at four years old at some of your father's meetings. Yes. What was in your heart? What was this message and how did you know that you needed to tell it to the world? Well, for me, it was really quite simple because 
I really wanted people to feel peace in their lives. Peace was an important part. I mean, the way I see it today after so many years of doing this is when I travel around the world, I see that human beings have abandoned humanity. You know, buffaloes haven't abandoned buffalo ship. Dogs haven't abandoned being a dog, but humans have abandoned, abandoned being humanity. a human, wow. the humanity. Wow. And we are looking at differences. We're not looking at the similarities. And so I really wanted people to get in touch because peace isn't just one thing. You know, peace is when a bunch of things are right. That's when peace happens. It's like a light bulb going on. Right. Well, there has to be electricity going to it. Mm -hmm. The filament has to be right. Mm -hmm. It has to be plugged into the socket. And then when all these things are right, that bulb will light up. Right. But not before that. And so when people say, oh, yeah, just bring peace. No, a lot of things have to be in place. Have to align. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then it happens. Do you think human beings really understand peace? And do they really want it? Well, the beautiful thing about peace is that it's not going to come from outside. Peace is in every single human being. Every single human being. And so it's not like we have to go and mine it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> import it or export it or create it. And it's it. not a state that's going to come over you and you'll suddenly feel No, peace. it's inside of you. Hmm. There is anger inside of you. There is fear inside of you. But there is joy inside of you. And there's forgiveness inside of you. There is hate inside of you. And there is love inside of you. And it just depends on what you nurture. You know, what is the difference between a garden and an abandoned field? The other is being nurtured. One is being, being nurtured. nurtured. Yeah. You plant roses. You give water to them. You plant grass. You give water to it. And these things will grow. Beautiful things will grow. In the abandoned field, things are growing too. But those are things that you don't want to grow. Yeah, yeah. And it's as simple as that. People have made it so complicated. You know, when people don't want to do something. And, and, and a good example would be when we were young. And we didn't want to do our homework. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boy, we came up with some very, very fancy explanations, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And, and this is what people have done with peace. Oh, peace is impossible because how are you going to get all the people, 7.5 right, billion right. people lined up the same way? But I'm saying, well, excuse me, 7.5 billion people don't have to line up the same way because the peace is already inside of them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like some, you know, face has to be painted or some, uh, you know, inoculation has to occur before peace will happen. It's already there. It is just a matter of nurturing what is good inside of us. Right. The world is in so much turmoil and pain right now. There's so much anger, so much greed, so much war, and people think that peace is something they can actually war um, over to, to reach. How did we get here? Well, this is a very clear example of what happens when the field has been left abandoned. You're looking at the field and saying, well, gee, there's weeds growing here. There's all this other stuff growing here. It looks, it looks terrible. There's garbage everywhere. Because we don't understand the importance of being human. Mm -hmm. This is not taught to us in schools. This is not taught to us at the training camps that happen with corporations. This is, nobody mentions it. What is it like to be a human? A human. Wow. Wow. And we need to know. We have gotten it so out of touch. We know everything about cell phones, but we know nothing about ourselves. And Socrates, long time ago, said, know thyself. And wow. that's how far back already the caution was being triggered. Right. You better know who you, you are. are, otherwise the consequences of this are going to be something you're not going to like. As we see today. As we see today. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back with more. Okay, after the break, Danilo makes us delicious cheesy oniony pies, perfect for a picnic, and we continue our conversation with Prem Rawat. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Express yourself. Clicks. Feel good. Pay less. Express yourself. 
Welcome back to Afternoon Express South Africa. So we're in the kitchen with myself and Clary making the triple threat. It's the perfect picnic pie and it's purely vegetarian and available on our website, that recipe and shopping list. So I'm very excited to see where we begin because pie usually is just a whole bunch of, what's it called? Puff pastry and- I was gonna say filling. Filling and puff pastry. I think, I think the trick to a perfect pie is Noticing the filling and not the pastry. Oh, I so see. that you get all that it's filled with goodness as opposed to just tons and tons and tons of pastry and like, okay. oh wait, where's the filling? Mm. And the thing is making a perfect picnic pie, I'm assuming it's gonna be smaller than a traditional pie, right? One so, big one. Well, I mean, the thing with picnics is that it's hot. You know, we're going into like summer, summer, mm. summer season, holiday season. You want something that can taste just as amazing cold. So okay. you cook it at home, you make it at home, you take it on your picnic, you know, when it's cold and then you just end up eating it, it and you're like, oh, why did I make this? No, a pie is perfect for picnic in okay, that way. Hot or cold, delicious. All right, so, so how do just, we get started and what can I do? Just started caramelizing our onions here. Mm -hmm. And what we're just gonna do to this first, if you wanna pass me the sugar, we're just gonna add a little balsamic and a little bit of sugar to it, just to kind okay. of add another layer of flavor and just really complement the, the onions here. Balsamic okay. and onion just goes fabulously. And then a little bit of sugar to offset the the sourness of the balsamic. And you've used a treacle, obviously, because it's a little bit, it'll help thicken it quite nicely and it's got a nice, rich caramel flavor. Beautiful flavor. So that's cool. just gonna slowly cook down. The sugar's gonna get nice and rich and thick, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the balsamic is gonna also get so nice So it'll become a glaze, syrupy. basically. It'll Absolutely. be a nice little syrupy glaze. So okay. just turn that down a little bit, and our milk is, as you can see, nice and hot. So let's just take that off the heat for a second. In order to make the filling, we're making effectively a roux, which is butter, flour, and milk. Hot milk, because it helps the butter and flour not to clump together. Okay, so into so. a hot pan goes the butter. And then let's just let that melt for a second. Cool. And then you can slowly start to sprinkle in the flour and you want to whisk, 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 whisk. Ooh, keep so make going. sure it doesn't clump at all. This is, this is the, the base of any sort of white sauce. Um, when you're making a, a cheese sauce, we really are making a thick cheese sauce here. Basically. And that's gonna be the inside of our pie. So you want to cook that a little bit. Let's just turn those balsamic onions down. Cook that a little bit just until the flour kind of gets that rawness out. Yes. Okay, I see. So then you Didn't can grab... Didn't know flour could have rawness, but okay. No, it does. So it ends up having a floury taste to it. So you want to okay. get rid of that floury taste. So this starts cooking. Let's turn this up a little bit. And then you're going to pour in the hot milk. So the Say hot when. milk, you can just keep... You can go and just like trinkle it in there. And just whisk, 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 whisk. So, you know, obviously if you've got a, a kitchen helper like Danilo over here, it makes <laughs> life easier. But you can do this by yourself. Just pour hey. in a little bit whisk, pour in a little bit whisk. Or if your children get really, really bored, ask your son to create a whole contraption where it starts to drip little bits of milk from the ceiling. I don't know. It sounds like your perfect picnic pie is going to yeah. take you a little while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a weekend project. Maybe you can incorporate it into a science project. Yeah. Okay, go for it. You can add all yeah, of it. There we go. And you can see it's a very thick paste here. So let's just get some back into it and give it a good stir. Mix, 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 mix. And then you're going to add the cheese. So again, oh. you want to let this cook a little bit longer than I have here, just to kind of get that rawness of the flour out. Okay. And then just slowly stir this in here. And then this is going to, this is a beautiful smoky cheese. So it's an oak smoke Stanford from Woolworths. It's Ooh, delicious. it smells delicious. It almost smells like smoked chicken. So it's really... If you want to get a kind of sense of what you mean by smoky. I don't, Ooh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going for smoked chicken. I'm no, going I know, for but I'm just a ton of cheese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose both the smokes so are the smoky, smoky is what it smells like. I get it. Okay, okay. so I'm going to just take this off now so I can mm -hmm. use... This is just making my life a little bit difficult. And then we're just cool. going to use the spatula. And then lastly, a few chives. Chives, smoky cheese, balsamic, all sorts of amazing yum, together. Yum, yum. And this is the filling of our pie. So okay. later we'll put it all together and pie it up. Amazing. So don't forget this recipe and shopping list is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. And you can find all the details there for us and cook along with us live right here on Afternoon Express. We're joined back on the couch now by Prem Rawat with Bonnie. We're back on the couch with International Ambassador of Peace, Prem Rawat. So Prem, you've spoken in some of the world's most important places. UK Parliament, the Italian Senate. And you've addressed so many important people and large crowds of people. What is at the core of this message that you deliver pe to people and how can they practically apply it to their lives? Well, first of all, uh, the practical application of it, you know, really begins with, again, understanding you're a human being. You have eyes. Look. Look. Look what's happening. Look at today. You know, I always say, if you don't understand one, What's the point in going on to two? Because if you don't understand one, you're not gonna understand two. And if you don't understand two, you're not gonna understand three. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand now, 
how are you going to understand today? And if you don't understand today, how are you going to understand tomorrow? tomorrow? But we all seem to be experts in tomorrow, but we have no idea what today is. Today and we have no idea what now is. So it begins with being a human being. You have ears. Listen. Right now, the biggest problem we have, we have language, but we don't know how to use it. We don't know how to talk. Mothers can't talk to their children. Children's don't, children don't listen to their mother. Mother sometimes doesn't listen to the children. Mm -hmm. Husband doesn't listen to the wife. Wife doesn't listen to the husband. Uh, the governments don't listen to, to people. People don't listen to the governments. And I mean, it's like, so what do we have ears for? But what are we listening to? Well, we've got our earbuds, and away we go. Just cut off the world. Yeah. This is not a human being. We need to understand things, very, very simple things. We need to listen to each other. We need to learn how to respect each other. We need to understand that other people have needs too. I am the founder of the Prem Rawat Foundation, and we do a lot of incredible work around the world. But I have to some days just sit down and say, you know, I wish we weren't doing this Mm -hmm. that this was actually just happening because of the goodness of people's heart yeah. and everybody was helping other person out you know but that doesn't happen it's like no people say to me what are you going to do when somebody comes and attacks you you know and i say of course you're going to have to do whatever you're going to have to do but don't you understand that that's not necessary we don't have to get to the point where we have to attack each other. Mm -hmm. We have to kill each other. Because whatever needs we have, one of the programs that the Prem Raut Foundation has is we do food for people. And we have a facility in Ranchi, India. We have a facility in Dhading in Nepal and one in Ghana, West Africa. So one of the things we did is we provide one-time meal, just one-time meal to the kids of that area, local area. Yeah. And that area has been determined by the chiefs. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no politics going on. It's very simple. But the main thing about the food is the food that we provide is the food that they're used to eating. Not some weird thing that they don't even know what that is. Okay. So they get local food, very clean, very hygienically created and cooked. And I mean, the kitchen is impeccable. Impeccable, yeah. And so what do you suppose happened in these communities? Amazing transformation, just one time meal. Mm -hmm. And the amazing transformation was that for the first time, the children of this local area actually graduated from the school and moved on to universities. Wow. For years, they were stuck in school. They would drop out, never go on to university. And that change happened. Wow. Second change, because they were getting clean water, they were getting clean food, the health dramatically improved. improved yeah. And the third thing, nobody guesses this one, the crime rate plummeted. Wow. The crime rate plummeted because now people didn't have to go and steal things because they got that one yes. day, one meal, and, and it, it was offset. Consistent. Yes. It offset. Yeah. You know, just enough, just enough. You're doing some work in South Africa. You'll be working on peace in Soweto. Tell us some of the events planned around that. Oh, I, ever since I first came to South Africa, I always wanted to go to Soweto because that's a, that they told me this is where people are that are from South Africa. All right. You know, and it was like, yeah, I want to tell them about peace. peace. I want to bring them the message of hope. And so I'm going to be going there, and this will be my second time. And I was really, really excited the first time that uh, I was invited to Sweto. And the enthusiasm of the people and how they took this message to heart. Because they've been through so much. And what they have been through, they did not need to go through it. It was a man-made calamity. It, was not, it had nothing to do with anything else. It was man-made calamity. 
And this is so sad that we do this to each other, yeah. of what just happened in Paris. This is a man-made calamity of what's going on in the Middle East, what goes on all over the place, the, the, the things that people do to each other. This is not, I mean, even animals don't do this. Yeah. And we always say animals are lower than us. Actually, they seem more intelligent than us. <laughs> I'm very excited about this book. In fact, I can't wait to read it. It's called Splitting the Arrow. What is the gist of this book? Splitting the Arrow is uh, about a little story. And the gist of that story is this, that there was a man, and he used to go exhibit his archery skills from village to village, people would come, everybody would applaud. I'll make this very short. Yeah. People would applaud <laughs> and everything else, and he was like, oh yeah, this is me, and he was really proud of what he could do. And he would shoot one arrow, hit the target, he would shoot another arrow, split the first arrow, and so on and so forth. And then, one day while he was doing his exhibition, at the back of the venue, he heard somebody saying, oh, it's just a matter of practice. It's just a matter of practice. And so this really irked him. After he was finished with his exhibition, he went back looking for who said this. He found a man with two big clay pots connected with the bamboo and empty bottles. And he went over to him and said, do you, do you keep saying, you know, it's just a matter of yeah. practice? Yeah. A matter of he said, yes, it is. And the guy says, what do you mean? You know, all these people, this is me. I can do this. Yeah. It's nothing to do with practice. So the guy says, let me show you. So he picked up a big clay pot. He took the bottle. And he poured oil from the big clay pot into the bottle without spilling, without a, spilling. Dr a drop. Without a funnel. Without a funnel. And he looked at the guy and he says, now you do this. And the guy understood. Right. And he said, look, this is what I practice. This is what I'm good at. You practice archery, you're good at it. You're good at it. So always when I tell this story to my audience, I stop and I say, I have a question for you. What do you practice? Wow. How long does it take you to get upset? Oof. If it's like that, that means that's what you practice. That's you're good at it. That's what you practice, and you're getting better and better at it. Oh, Absolutely. my gosh. Okay, I can't wait to read this book. And I can't wait for you to read this book, because today we're giving away a copy of Prem Rawat's book, Splitting the Arrow, Understanding the Business of Life. To five lucky viewers, to enter, please SMS the keyword books, your name and city to double three seven two eight. SMS is cost one rand fifty, T's and C's apply, and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. After the break, we highlight the importance of deworming your pet and we get some pregnancy health tips from Sophia Swanepoel, online editor of your pregnancy magazine. Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's lovely to have you back with us in the loft. Now, we take a slight deviation as we speak about your pets. And remember, parasites worm their way into most pets' lives, pets lives at some point. Deworming is an important preventative measure for reducing the chance of these parasites and improving our pets' health. Fortunately, Bob Martin provides a range of deworming options for both cats and dogs. Now, you need to keep your phones handy because we're giving away some of their products a bit later on. But when our pets, when in our pets' lives should we deworm and how often? In the loft to help us get a better understanding is veterinarian Dr. Jennifer Stock. Now, Dr. Jen, I'm probably going to answer one of your questions for you about when you know your dog or your cat has got worms. Because I remember as a small child, uh, I used to live on the school property and we had this dog that would roam the property and have a good time. And during one of my prize givings, he did decided to make his proceeding from the one side of the stage to the other side of the stage, dragging his bum across the floor. And we knew that it was time to have our dog dewormed at that specific point. I remember being so embarrassed. What exactly is deworming and sort of where do these dogs pick up these parasites? All right, so in terms of picking them up, they can pick them up anywhere and everywhere. Unfortunately, your kittens and puppies that you get from welfares or breeders already have quite a high burden. They're infect infected when they are still in the womb by the mother. Oh. And while they're drinking milk, they get infected. So it's imperative, imperative that while your kittens and puppies are young, um, you deworm them then. And then just in the general environment, if your dog does its business out on the grass and another dog comes and sniffs along, that will be a source of contamination. Sure. Um, 
and also fleas. So you might think that your worming, deworming is sorted and your dog has fleas and it sees other dogs that has fleas and they transmit the worms as oh, well. Wow. And last but not least, we can, we can give them to our pets ourselves. Sure. So when it comes to actually getting contracting the worms themselves, once you've given them the vaccination as a puppy, can they contract the worms again? Yeah, so it's an ongoing, an ongoing thing. We don't, unfortunately, there's no vaccination against worms. It's an ongoing treatment. Mm. Um, so when they're puppies and they have those first three vaccinations, we deworm it every, oh. every vaccination for three months to so kind of get the worm burden down really as low as we can. Yeah. So if we don't get them vaccinated, what can happen to our puppies and cats? Horrible things. Um, so if... If we don't do anything and the animal's in a relatively safe environment with a low worm burden and low risk, mm. they might have a few worms and that might never actually affect them. But what we see a lot with dogs that are in high risk environments and have high worm burdens is they become anemic and they become acidic and they lose weight. So they sure. can't put on weight, their bellies get really big and Below rotund mm. and people often think they're fat and meanwhile mm. they're starving. Um, sure. And that really pale, pale gums, they, there's some worms that feed on blood once they're inside. Oh. So it can get really serious. In most cases, mm. in most cases, not too bad. So I've mentioned the way that I figured out that our dog had worms was when he was dragging his bum across the floor. And I think that's the most common uh, way to spot it. What are the other ways we can know if our, our dogs or cats are suffering from worms? So if your dog hasn't been dewormed recently and goes outside, it does have worms. Um, and it goes outside, what do you mean? Into your garden, it sees other dogs, you have birds in your garden, you oh, have I birds see. on your veranda. It, it will, your dog will have a very low worm burden, um, sure. which puts him or her and yourself at risk. Um, the other signs, like I said, if you, look at your, if you look at your dog's gums and they're quite pale, it could mm. be a problem. Diarrhea could be a problem. The scooting, the very, yeah. <laughs> very Is that what it's called, scooting? scooting? I don't know how to use it to make it not sound terrible for television, but scooting, yeah. I like that. Worms is one of three things that, that causes that scooting, so okay. it could be that. Or just a dog that, you know, you're feeding it good food, it's not putting on weight, mm. it's got a kind of a scruffy coat and it's just not doing well. Okay. Um, so those would be your main... So then if it can contract them so often, how often should we then go and get our dogs vaccinated? You mentioned a couple of times. Yeah, so, so the vaccinating is for your diseases and that just happens as routine right at the beginning. Okay. Deworming is a lot more your responsibility. Um, it's not something you even need to go into the vet for, oh. but it is something that depends on each animal's lifestyle. So three to four times a year is actually the safest way to go. So every three to four months. Obviously, if you have a cat living kind of in an apartment on the fourth floor that never goes out, never sees other animals, mm. twice a year is fine. And if you're going sure. up the coast and going to farms, you might need to do it every, once a month. But as a rule, three to four times a year should be good and keep them safe. Awesome. Dr. Jane, thank you so much for sharing this advice. Hopefully some people's eyes have been awakened as they realize, oh, I have not had done my demoming in so many months. So hopefully we've, we've inspired some people. Thank you so much for joining us in the loft today. Today we are also giving away another 500 Rand hamper courtesy of Bob Martin. All you have to do is SMS the keywords Bob Martin, your name and city to 33728. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. T's and C's do apply and are available on our website afternoonexpress.co.za. For now, so let's join Bonnie for a cup of tea. Welcome to our Fresh Pack Natural Goodness series. We all agree that every woman wants to have a healthy, happy pregnancy. So today we're going to be talking about prioritizing what's important and how healthy choices can help you make your pregnancy the best that it can be. In the loft with me is Sophia Swanepoel, online editor for Your Pregnancy magazine. And before we start, let's help ourselves to some Fresh Pack rooibos. Welcome to the loft. Thank you. Whether you have it hot or cold, it's always amazing. Now, having been pregnant myself once upon a time, I know that pregnancies are different for every woman. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the basic things that you can do to ensure a happy pregnancy? Well, I think these days we're all so busy. So when we do get pregnant, and I've been pregnant twice, it's hectic, things are busy. Um, so we have to slow down and just think of ourselves and think of our mm -hmm. babies. Mm -hmm. And so I always say there's five golden rules. First of all, um, prioritize. Try and do what you have to do for you and your baby, what's absolutely necessary, and then let go. Just let go. Now, you, you can't be a superwoman, we all try, yeah, but, but yeah. it's necessary to sometimes just now focus on you and your baby. Right. Um, secondly, involve the others. Involve your partner, involve your family, involve your friends. They probably want to be involved they anyway. Do. Yeah. yeah. And um, the thing is, if they're with you, 
through the whole journey, then they also understand what you're going through and then yeah, they can yeah. offer you support when you need it. And I always say, ask for help, accept help, yes, you know, don't try help. to yes, be proud yeah, and do everything yeah. yourself. Um, I think people thirdly, are very happy to help pregnant women. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and play the pregnancy card. Yes, yes you play like it. be able to do it again. Milk it. Exactly. <laughs> um, third rule is relax and rest. You'll never be able to rest again. So rest yeah, now. Put yeah. up your feet. It's hot. Your feet's going to swell. Just um, try and sit down. Try and get naps in as much as possible. And also relax. You know, um, when you're all stressed and your body's full of adrenaline, your baby feels it. Yes, It's important yes. to be calm. My mom always said, calm, mommy, calm, baby. Aww. So, you know, just do relaxing things and try to focus on, on things that don't stress you out. Yeah, as yeah. Much. Now, in terms of diet, what's most favorable? I know taking into consideration the cravings. <laughs> I had crazy cravings. I think Did I, you? Ate, I, never, I ate halloumi cheese every single day <laughs> of the nine months that I was pregnant. <laughs> but what I are never, healthy choices? <laughs> Just try and eat fresh and natural and healthy. Regular meals, snack on nuts and dried fruit and healthy things. Yeah. You know, it's so easy to say, oh, I have a craving for McDonald's, oh, I'm eating for two, but in the end, you're going to look like two adults, whereas you're actually eating for an adult and a very tiny baby. A tiny baby, yeah. So um, have an extra glass of milk or a banana towards the end of your pregnancy, but don't eat for two. Yeah. Just eat healthily. Um, what you want to avoid is raw and undercooked meats and fish and eggs. No raw, no undercooked. Check your, check your um, patties, check your chicken. Yeah. Um, and obviously, unfortunately, no oysters, bultong, the cured meats. If you really want to eat them, heat them up properly until it's piping hot. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good yeah. to know. I don't think I knew that entirely. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of exercise, what are good exercises for a pregnant woman? Yoga really helped me a lot, you know, just to strengthen the core and help to strengthen the lower back muscles mm -hmm. because when your bump grows, you know, it's a real big strain on yes, your back. Yes, it is. Um, also just for endurance during labour. And you're going to be busy as a new mum. And yes. so you need to be fit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just make sure that if you do any strenuous exercises or horse riding or anything, mm -hmm. you know, very exciting and adventurous, just before you do anything, check with your doctor. Another point is um, that we need to keep hydrated because we're on the go and we are creating another human being inside, mm. you know, we do have to stay hydrated all the time. So drink water, drink um, lots of water. You can have a slice of cucumber or strawberry in it. Um, drink rooibos. Of course, it's naturally um, caffeine-free, so it's, it's perfect for yes. pregnant women. Um, you can drink it hot or cold. I prefer mine cold, no sugar with some lemon. Uh, and there you go. It's perfect. Refreshing and hydrating. Thank you so much, <laughs> Sophia. You're welcome. You make me want to be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt that rooibos plays a very important role in our everyday lives. And this is especially true when you're expecting. So take heed of Sophia's advice. Relax and enjoy this exciting and memorable time of your life. From all of us, until next week, keep well with the natural goodness of fresh bag. Fresh pack. Goodness comes naturally. A very warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. So we are in the kitchen and those who know me know that I love to cook, but only when I have Claire next to me because it always helps to make things simple and easy. You always make it look delicious and easy without even trying. So we're making a, a perfect picnic pie today on the show. Yes, indeed. It's delicious. It's vegetarian. The recipe is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. And earlier on in the show, we created the filling and now mm -hmm. it's time to put the whole thing together. So speaking of filling, so it's cooled down slightly. It doesn't look fantastic like this, but it yeah. is going to taste mm. amazing. It looks like that Play-Doh stuff you used to play with at school. Yeah, so it does. Th this is the whole thing. We made a thick... <laughs> Thick roux, so it kind yes. of holds it all together. Yeah. And, like and you can eat it cold, which rocks. Yep. Well, not recommended, but you can. Of course you eat it cold. Okay, cool. Not like this, in the pie. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in goes the balsamic, onions, Oof. 
So those you can see, they're rich that's with color, hell. rich with flavor, and we kind of mix this all up together. So that's, like I said, that smoky cheese and the balsamic onions are mm. delicious together. So also just get and a little And the chives give a nice freshness too, which is adding all of those sort of flavors together, which definitely, rocks. Definitely, definitely. So just really get your back into this and just mix it all up so it's nicely evenly dispersed. That looks good. Season it a little bit. The cheese is quite salty, so don't go crazy. A little bit of pepper, and that's... I told you she makes things look easy. That is the filling. Okay, so for the pastry, just brushing off the excess flour here. You don't have too much going on in here. No. We're just going to cut this in half, just carefully, so you don't chop the table like okay. that. What's the reason for doing that, by the way? So this is the we're going to make the shape. So you want to. Let's what just, shape? Like a pie shape? Yeah, whatever you want. So we're going to fold it over like well, that and make our. You say pie. make the shape, but like I'm not meant to know the, what that means. The okay. pie shape. Okay. So you can make whatever <laughs> shape you want. Mm -hmm. You can do little squares. You can do little circles. So we're okay. going to go for a triangle. So a little bit of. The filling goes in here. You should do this right because it's a right triangle. <laughs> like, you know, all, all about everyone, that I think at home today. just went. Everyone at home just went. Oh, there he goes. Poor Claire <laughs> has to deal with this. <laughs> I hope everyone thinks that. Okay. <laughs> this Let's is awkward sorry, now. Okay, let's then. carry on. Okay, so put that into the center. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to brush around. You want to brush around? Let's get you. What? What's the brush around on? So brush around the edges here. So this with is going to with the oh, egg, wash. egg wash. Oh, okay, egg wash. <laughs> Sorry, my my instructions are failing me today. Yeah, she's there? like, you know what to do. I'm like, no, I don't know what to I've do. I've been teaching you for so long now. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> like you should know. <laughs> no, I'll teach you a new time, a new one every day. Pie is something I'm honestly, I'm not good at working with puff pastry because it seems too delicate for me to handle. So what else do you know? All the way, keep All the way going. Okay. So like I said, yeah. this is like glue, so you don't want to skimp on the glue, otherwise it's going to pop open. And actually if it pops open, it's not the end of the world. It actually looks quite cool. Yeah. So the cheese kind of Bursts. oozes out and it looks yummy. Cool. So we're just going to fold that over like that. Delicious. And just seal it down. Oh, cool, I see. So you're making edges. like a massive samosa, basically. Yeah, making, this one's a big one, actually. I should have cut it into Rocking. four. I didn't realize how and big it is. Like that. This that, one's for you. What this is the, <laughs> the really big one. <laughs> because you said you like pies so much. Okay, and what happened to that, by the way? You... Then, this is going to get brushed over as well for some more egg wash. So this is going to uh, will brown the pie yeah. okay. and give it that beautiful color. So okay, that, that I didn't know. And that goes into the oven for how long? About 180 to 200 degrees. You want the oven quite high for puff pastry. It's kind of lift it up. up. So mm -hmm. let's go 200 degrees um, until it's caramelized and brown. It's still nice and golden. The recipe is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. You can go visit that and cook along with us right here on Afternoon Express. Back to the couch. Imagine what kind of a world it would be if there was no rape or child abuse. The 16 Days of Activism for No Violence Against Women and Children campaign challenges South Africans to declare a truce on violence against women and children and ultimately to make it a permanent one. For its 16th year, with the theme Count Me In, together moving at non-violent South Africa forward, our country is taking part in the global campaign, which runs from today through to International Human Rights Day on the 10th of December. With us in the loft to celebrate at the start of the campaign is anti-abuse activist, ambassador of Sisters Incorporated and Blow the Whistle campaign, Good Hope FM DJ, Tammy B. Welcome to the loft, Tammy. Thank you, Bonnie. I'm so excited to be here, actually. Awesome. Talk about this, yeah, so. Tammy, abuse is something that has affected you in the past quite dramatically. And as a result, you've now used your experience to help other people and to, to voice what happened to you in hopes that it will bring other people out of their darkness and their brokenness and find freedom and, and, and find peace again. What drew you to this campaign? I think everybody knows I'm quite a loud person and I like to voice yep. my opinion. And I think uh, growing up, I mean, obviously my parents died when I was 13, but during that phase, um, it was very hard for me to voice what was going on inside of me. So I obviously acted in ways that weren't always correct. I would steal, I would fight, I would do everything wrong. Um, and at the school I was at, it was not a good thing to do. And it was an all-girls school. So I think I found that every time I did it, it was obviously a way to try and get my dad to see how much I loved him, but obviously in the wrong way, in the hopes that maybe he would stop what he was doing. And in, What was in he those, doing? Um, obviously, um, my dad was very abusive, and he beat my mom, uh, he belittled my brother, um, he beat me, and I think one of the first memories I had, in fact, was um, my mom carrying me, and I just woke up on the floor, and my mom was just saying, look for my glasses, look for my glasses, and I was so young, and I just still remember that, you know, and just, like, a lot of memories that were obviously um, a little bit more intense than that, and um, I have a younger sister, and having to 
well, not having to, I love my little sister, yeah. uh, looking after her when my parents were fighting and trying to make sure, because she was five years younger than me, that she was bottle fed. And she became quite she looked maternal. After. Yes, yes. She wouldn't say that now, but she's <laughs> very independent. Um, but yes, back in those days, just trying to relieve the situation at all times and always feeling like whenever anything happened, I was always awake, I always heard what was going on. Um, I always saw what was going on. And um, obviously it went from my mom to us. And that's kind of when she started noticing that that's not what she wanted. My mom was a very, very loving individual and um, everybody who knew her would say that. Um, so I think for me, um, it was obviously I was 13 um, when, when they died and I was very, you know, this little punk and, you know, like always doing everything wrong, like I said. And, um, you know, she just kept on nurturing that because she knew what my dad would do. I mean, the one day I literally stole at the shop and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> this is the yeah. moment my dad's gonna come here and I'm dead, <laughs> you yeah. know? And she rocked up because I was like, please just phone my mom. And yeah. she just came running there. And she wasn't angry. She didn't, she wasn't upset. She just knew where it was coming from. So I was very blessed to have that love. And that's yeah. why I'm doing this fight. Yeah. Um, well, not a fight, just, you know, trying to yeah. tell people it's okay, you know, to, to be open and honest. How, and does, how does one take that journey from yeah. being a victim to actually triumphing enough to speak out? Well, the last time my dad ever hit me was the first time I stood up for myself. And I realized, you know what, it is scary. You live in fear your whole life. And then you think, but is this life? Yeah, yeah. Is this how my life's going to be my entire life? And the last time he hit me was before school and it was over a set of keys I'd lost in my bag. Sure. And he, uh, in fact, he actually used to show me all these movies of Jean-Claude Van Damme and all of them. And in the one part, the school had a stick over, over her and she like slipped under. Yeah. And my dad had a stick and he was hitting wow. me and he had split my hand open. And I just saw my mom's face, like how she didn't know what wow. to do. And she tried to intervene and he said, yeah. if you carry on, I'm gonna make sure it happens to yeah. you. And when you put that stick over, it <laughs> immediately, you know, fight or flight. Yeah. And I just fought and I slipped under and I ran outside and I just started screaming. And that's my thing. That's why I'm so loud yes, now. Yes. Um, I'm very, why is uh, the 16 voicing. days of activism so important and how mm. can we get involved? Well, I'm obviously working with Sisters Inc. Mm. And um, I love the Blow with the Whistle campaign and what they um, stand for. They have an app. So um, especially for ladies, you can download that app and it's for free. Yeah. And basically you put in your details, you put in your details of everybody you know. And say you want to go to the shops and you're walking. You say where you are, where you're going, how long it's going to take. And when you get there, you put your code in. If you don't get there, then it immediately sends a signal out to everybody else that something's happened. And That's then incredible. hopefully that will kind of yeah. make it smaller. Whereas Sisters Inc., these ladies have done that hard part. I'm so proud of them. And they've actually gone, you know what, I'm over it. They take their kids, they go to Sisters Inc., and these ladies look after them and their kids. It's amazing. We've done nails, we've done movie nights. Myself, Nyanda Tini that I work with, she's also an unbelievable woman. And uh, now we'll be doing self-defense classes okay, uh, with wonderful. them. And we just want to get them that extra feel of protection. Like now they, they're strong, you know that they were fearless, they were courageous, they made that first step. Now to just start feeling it inside as well. Give them a helping you know. hand and a step up. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you, Bonnie. It's incredibly brave. Thank you. 16 Days of Activism runs until 10th of December, but let's not stop there. Together we can make it 365 days of non-violence against women and children in South Africa. We'll be right back after this. Give kids the gift of hearing this Christmas. Are you with us? Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins, or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. So as you see, Bonnie and myself are both wearing our ribbons as we are uh, trying to gain more information around 16 days of activism, activism against women and children <laughs> abuse. And we've got Tammy B joining us in the loft today. And Tam, we managed to have a, a quick chat with you before the ad break about your story. But I think the end of your story happens to be the part that I think you've risen above the most. Tell yes. us quickly about that. Um, well, it did end up that my dad killed my mom and then killed himself when I was 13. And um, I think the most important thing is that she made a stand and she knew what was going to happen. Everybody that knows the story and knows my mom 
knew it was going to happen, but you wanted to protect us. And I think when you have kids, uh, they should be the most important thing in your life. And you mm. should take that courage. And yes, it could be hard. Yes, it could go that way. Mm. And I don't believe that my dad is a horrible person, but everybody mm. needs help. And if you feel like you're in a situation like that, if you're a child, don't be scared to say something to anybody. And I know you probably think it's going to have the worst effect, but that is not a life to yeah. live. You yeah. should own your and life. What, what we've done is all of that yes. information we've posted on our Facebook yes. page and on our social media sites. Make sure you guys go check it out. If you are looking for support, please reach out and do it. This food looks delicious. Thank you so much, Claire. South Africa, have a great afternoon. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow on Afternoon Express. Good night. Happy eating. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we chat to media personality Jen Su about her new book, From Z to A-Lister. We get under the skin with Jimmy Nevis and we bring you the latest fashion from designer Tabo Maketa. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.